Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Dr. Morgan Hayes. She's with the University of Kentucky as an ag engineer there. Now is the time to start thinking about if we need these systems or what we might need to do. Yeah, so for a lot of our poultry producers in Western Kentucky, these evaporative cooling systems are critical for keeping the birds healthy uh, and growing the way they need to. Uh, but we also see a lot of evaporative systems being installed on greenhouses uh, and utilized here as we go into this late spring, early summer season, trying to make sure that those plants don't get too hot in those greenhouses before we get them planted out outside if we are moving them. Uh, and evaporative systems have a lot of maintenance associated with them. And I just want to touch on it because this is sort of the time of the year where we can maybe make some changes and also do some planning and, and put this into our our repertoire for the summer so that our evaporative system works all summer the way we need it to. An evaporative cooling system basically is a reservoir of water with a circulation pump in it. Uh, that pump then has a piping system that moves that water up to the top of what's known as an evaporative pad. And, and I have a, a sample here so people can see it. It looks like a piece of uh, corrugated cardboard essentially with a black edge on the outside edge. Uh, and it's about six inches thick and it fits in the wall and then air flows through it, the water is evaporated off of it, the water comes off, the temperature drops of the air, and it becomes a little bit more humid. Um, and that system essentially allows for a cooler temperature for the animals or the plants inside the greenhouse or the barn. Yeah, because sometimes in Kentucky, the weather is <laughs> all over the place, but it does get hot and the heat can be detrimental to the plants and the birds. And these systems, operate extremely well under normal design conditions. They don't add a lot of static pressure. They're not hard on the fans. They, they tend to work pretty well, uh, but there are some challenges with them. And one of the bigger challenges is that we tend to get some buildup of minerals, uh, of salts on these pads. Uh, and then as we get into the summer, that outside surface, because it has some of those things on it, it grows algae really well as well. So, we have these buildups, we have this, and then eventually the pads start to get soft. And that's that's usually driven by some ammonia, uh, a lot of times with poultry houses, just breaking down that material. It would break down over time anyway, but a little bit faster with some of that ammonia from those barns. So what are some good tips about how to maintain the system so that when it is the hottest, it's working at the most efficient way possible? The best thing we can do is to keep flushing our system out. Um, those waters and impurities are a big problem. And you know, the reservoir only holds about 250 gallons of water, but in a day we can evaporate anywhere from like 500 to thousands, 2000 or more gallons of water um, if we're running continuously through the day on that house. And so all that water that's evaporating is coming off, but at the same time, we're refilling it with more water that still has additional salts and minerals in it. So the buildup can be fivefold, tenfold, a hundredfold over a grow out, a six week grow out on a bird. It's it's a tremendous amount of salts, even on good water that isn't super hard. Um, it can build up very quickly. So we want to can we want to have a flushing system in place, and we want to regularly flush those lines so that we don't clog all of the holes in the piping system, uh, so that the pad itself doesn't build up with material because that will be hard on the fans. Uh, all of that's really important. If you're running in the heat of the summer, it might be every week or every two weeks. Uh, in these sort of shoulder seasons, as it's running just part of the time, you can probably extend that out to maybe every two, four weeks. Um, but once we get into the heat of the summer, the plan should be to flush it pretty regularly to try and get that buildup out of those lines. Some of these systems have a filter in place to try and catch some of that, but Certainly for some of these smaller salts and minerals, it's very hard to capture all of them on a filter system. One thing I will say is that when we see algae buildup, typically we can use a cleanser. Um, what we don't want to do is add bleach into our system. Bleach is very destructive to the pads. It will take the life of these pads down very quickly. Um, what we want is a quaternary ammonia type of cleanser, which is what's out on the market and commercially available for them. That's much more effective at killing the algae. Uh, when you see that running in a system like this, it will foam. Uh, so you will know that you have that happening because you will see the foam in the system. Uh, and that's a really good option as well. Thanks for watching and have a great day.